Hi, hello everybody, Judy and Caroline. This is Jason. Right, well, today on the old podcast, um, I think we said we were going to talk about patterns, didn't we? In mm. patterns and language. I, I did a bit of homework, as you do, just to refresh my brain, to reignite the patterns, you know. Um, but I, I think I think we'll let Caroline lead because Car it was Caroline's question, wasn't it? What do you want to know about patterns? I can't guarantee that I'll be able to fill you in properly, but <laughs> no, it's, it's just that you both talk about patterns, and uh, it seems to be an essential part of um, the the process. And I was curious, and I was trying to find out more um, simply through my my work with people. And identify what these patterns might be because they're not very clearly explained. They're just um, it's assumed that you know what uh, what is meant. And so, okay. uh, yeah, so I've, I'm gradually. Acquiring. What do you what do you think they are? Well, yesterday I had a fantastic experience with this woman. She uh, ha she was using um, your your method English out mm -hmm. there. And uh, as I insist that uh, people do. And uh, she, as as many people don't, she hadn't prepared the lesson. So Oops. she said, yeah, she said, OK, well, let's do it together. I said, mm, all right. And uh, then I got a bit fed up at a certain point because I could see there was no, like, real point in doing it that way. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, the conversation wouldn't be uh, fruitful because yeah. she, would, she wouldn't have her patterns. Uh, and, uh, and I couldn't explain what patterns were in Italian because there's no good translation for the word patterns. And so I was saying it's like a repetitive design on, a, on some material, for example, that's a pattern or something technical. You can have something technical that can be repeated and it's a pattern. And um, I was just trying to give her different examples of what a pattern might be and then uh, lead it into, into the context of English um, acquisition and uh, being able to reproduce uh, something or say something basically that you have in your head but using a pattern because you studied the lesson <laughs> and uh, okay. what, I did in, what I did in the end because I, I, um, I could see it wasn't going to be much fun otherwise if, because she hadn't done it I, mm. I took her to Judy's book and I said look I'm going to show you another way of um, looking and, and using both of your materials together is really great. So I took it to English is crazy and an a different way of looking at it. And I showed her the six points, which if I'm not mistaken, Judy calls the six pounds. Uh, is, is that right? Yeah. So it's um, this. This is more or less um, what's uh, what I'm talking about. OK. Judy, got any comments? Sure. A, a pattern is always true. It's a rule. There's no exceptions. So if there's an I before E except after C, ex and this is an exception, it's not a rule. It's actually nothing. So human brains are hardwired to look for patterns. And we can't stop our brain doing it. This is how toddlers fill, uh -huh. figure out grammar it's, all it's by un themselves. It's unconscious. And then... As soon as we master any skill, we forget how we did it. And that's the problem. So, you know, we don't think about washing the dishes when we wash the dishes. We mm -hmm. don't think about driving the car. And yeah. it's a pretty complicated process yeah. driving a car. But once you've nailed drive the car, you yeah. know, you can talk, listen to the radio, think about other things while you're driving because you don't need your brain anymore. Yeah. You don't need your brain anymore for speaking English once you can speak it. And the so and it and it's given by, as you said, six there's sim simple, simple patterns. These are always true. Mm. But teachers do, are it's below our level of awareness, as, as Jason says. So we don't teach what we actually do. We teach what we were taught to teach. Yeah. And what we were taught to teach doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's just a, a good business plan to keep everybody in their seats. But it, it doesn't make a difference. So if you if you teach anything and say, but this is the exception, don't ever do it. Don't do it. They can't uh -huh. grasp it, especially in the flow of conversation. Conversation is so fleeting and they have to be present, present, present. You know, it's like jumping into a river. 
Uh-huh. Nobody can stay present to rules and exceptions when they're talking. Uh-huh. You can't do it. That's a good point. The 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 present short term memory, working short term memory, um, and that's that's the kind of thing like um, with the materials, our materials, they they look quite familiar to someone who's done a lot of ELT. And what they do, they're not there to teach you anything or to help you learn anything. They're there to reignite or or to bring out the existing, what I would call cognitive markers, memory markers of the language you've already acquired. And, and, And then bring them into short-term memory so that they're usable using short-term memory. So it's, it's a, there's a phrase used in teaching called scaffolding. So they scaffold. If you think of a scaffold, it supports something. So that the materials and the language of the materials re, re, bring up these memories, because most people have studied English for quite a long time anyway, in a traditional, conventional way, and enable them, prepare them for a conversation and enable them to get into the conversation and use the existing language that they have and add a little bit to it in the lesson that then they incorporate into their spoken communication. And if that is, language is all just patterns, right? So, so And not very many, just a handful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, this this is the thing, like you're, That the ba- there are some basic patterns which you refer to, which enable communication, and and they are the building blocks. They're they're like the foundations of communication, yep. and then once you've got those, what I would call automatized, i.e., long term memory, long term usable long, long usable long term memory that is automatic. So there's no pause. You're just able to communicate at a certain level, but you can communicate. And so you're using those basic patterns and then you're adding to them as you go using the materials. Yeah, go on. Well, then I have to be clear that the, the basic patterns in English are two. There's just two. So there's six to fluency. So there's a basic pattern to all expressions, for example. And they go, oh, expressions and idioms and there's millions of them and you have to memorize them. You don't know you don't. You know, what is the pattern that is underneath all idioms? So when you, when you hear a new idiom, I remember hearing 24-7, you know, and I, and I thought, I wonder what that means. And then your brain, the you know, does 24 already have a meaning? Does seven already have a meaning? Oh, it's 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. It's all the time. 24-7 is all the time. So you have to interpret expressions, but it's easy, easy to do. They're all based in Jason, exactly what you're talking about, the the first language, the most basic mm. language, you know, animals, numbers, um, body parts, food, there's only a couple of categories, the first thing that you learn in the c- colors, um, that you learn in a new language, that survival vocabulary, all expressions are rooted in that. Mm-hmm. So you and, and, and they're, all, they're also... As you're Extract a quality of a of a donkey and say stubborn as a mule. Oh, and the and, and the, the, the patterns of the language, i.e., the sounds and the meanings, are primarily acquired through on a personal level, through context, your own personal context, which aids your recall in terms of you know being able, being able to use Absolutely. them. Again. Absolutely. And languages are more the same than different. So we teach pronunciation, for example, as if they were mute. Yeah. yeah. Going, they already have all those sounds and you stand yeah. and barf at them long A and short A and you're going, well, they have long A and they don't have short A. So why don't you talk to them about short A and why don't you never say short A in your whole life? Why don't you do that? But mm. yeah. So identifying what's missing and there are very few points that are different. But people who, the polyglots, people who speak a lot of languages, say say that's how they do it. Yeah. They go, well, this is the same as my first language, and this is different. Yeah. This is the same, and this is different. Yeah. 
When I was doing my little bit of homework, um, I found a, a bit of research and an interesting sort of phrase was uh, pattern transfer equals language. Oh, I thought it. that was really good. I love it. So communication, what we're doing now is we're transferring patterns to each other's brains that have meaning and create understanding. And so, so it's a, it's a nice, that's the first time I've seen that. I, I, I like that. I like um, it. We also have a strategy. So when I don't know what you're saying, well, I respect you and we're colleagues and stuff. I'll say, I beg your pardon. But if it's, exactly. my, if it's my child and I don't know what they're saying. I just say, what? Yeah. But I'm not embarrassed. I'm not ashamed to say, I yeah. don't know what you said. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's a huge unlearning for, we talked about unlearning last time. That's a huge unlearning for students. Is nobody knows what each other's saying. You know, you're perfectly within. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're basically in a say, conversation. I don't know what you said, right? In a conversation, you're negotiating meaning. Yeah. Essentially. So it's a negotiation to work out whether you understand each other. But and, they're not uh, free to say, I don't. I'm free to say, I don't get what you said. But that, that's what Caroline's asked me about well, how I work with people. And I said, I never correct explicitly. Because if I if someone gets something wrong or says something incorrectly, I just go, sorry, can you say that again? And then they have another go. And then I go, sorry, I didn't quite get that. Can you say it, try again? And then they have another go. And then if, if they get it right, I go, oh, oh, OK. And that I so explained to Caroline is the reward. That's 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 the affirmation that they need that creates a memory around the correct pronunciation, and the and the and the understanding. So it's it's you said it's, all the right things, the, the the affirmation, the letting them figure it out. Mm. So the correcting in, in that was wrong. And, you know, we do it with our our whole hearts. We do it because we care and we think we're no, helping, I know, but we don't understand that the the fixing and the correcting and that's wrong is so destructive. It's, it's and damaging. It's actually yeah. teaching. That's what teaching teaching is, is finding mistakes and yeah. correcting mistakes. The whole regime is yeah, yeah. destructive. Yeah. 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 So well, it, it, crush, it, it, it crushes us. Ask questions. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, ask questions and acknowledge that's facilitating. It's, it's, there's it's, a distinction. Corrections just terrible. Like, yeah. do you mean, do you mean this or do you mean that? Is this what you mean? That can help as well. Yeah. Um, or, or if they yeah. don't get it, I just, I just, because I know that we're recording. I'll say, did you mean boom? And I'll say it correctly. And they'll go, yeah. And then they'll usually repeat what I've just said. Then they've got a recording of them saying it the way I said it. And then when they listen to it again, they're, enabling their brain to hear them using the correct pattern. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's and a like feedback you talk loop. about brain pattern, because that's the whole thing. So I love that you know that. And I love that, <laughs> that we had a meeting of the minds before we even had these conversations. I thought yeah. he gets it. He gets it. He gets it. From the moment I met you, I thought he gets it. Right. When was that? That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was. It was. It's, uh, I, 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 when I started doing EOT, when we, when we started in 2001 and had this idea and then we started working with some students and then, and then Georgina and I, like, after a few weeks of doing this, like, we, we, you know, like a typical sort of 20, 21 year old Japanese student on a year out, you know, very shy, like studied English for a long time, can read and write pretty well, but speaking very, very shy and I'd seen students like that for years in my previous school, my which taught in the normal way and was British Council accredited. And then I remember this girl, Emmy. I remember her name, her face, everything, right? This is from 2001, two. And when she arrived at the school, she wouldn't say boo to a goose. She was so, so shy. Four weeks later, I bumped into her on the stairs and I said, oh, hi, Emmy, how's it going? And I couldn't shut her up in English. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> and I walked into the office and I said to Georgie, I said, bloody hell, what's going on? And that's when I started digging into memory, psychology. I start, I just thought, I've got to know what is going on in their brains. <laughs> you yeah. know? And that's when I ended up reading stuff by Patricia Cool, who did brain imaging with babies on, on first language acquisition. Um, you know, skin, like pinker. I mean, like, you know, this, this, this patterning is, is, is linked to Chomsky's universal grammar. You know, Chomsky called it universal grammar because he came from a background of, 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 of grammatical instruction. But in that, he just used the word grammar to describe the innate grammar of a human being, which is their ability to recognize patterns. Yes. Perfect. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, it's like oh, all this time I've been doing this and I've been thinking this is like that, that everyone's doing it the wrong way, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So frustrating. <laughs> I mean, it's like. Well, yeah. And why? Why do we do it the wrong way? Because it makes more money to do it wrong. If, if there, it or when they, all the misnomer. So that misnomer of, of grammar when he really means pattern, but the man, the misnomers of um student center i love that there's, there's yeah. education theater Ooh. for you for sure it has absolutely That's nothing to do with students and rubbish. never yeah. has <laughs> but you know, it's student centered and, we're, and you go oh my god you know and personalization you is my favorite run <laughs> you know when they talk about personalization Oof. yeah no 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 it's it's like the, the Personalization is is important because because you have to attach your you know you're working with your own brain and its ability to recognize patterns, and and that involves memory. So your your memory builds cognitive markers around the language and the, and, the, and when you use it, how you use it, what you're feeling, what the smell smell was in the air at the time, your emotion, everything like that, what you can yeah. see, and and. So when you when you have a conversation with someone and you're practicing, you are personalizing the language because it's important to you. It's part of who you are in that communication communicative moment. So so that that's natural personalization from, from in my mind. But but the idea that that a conventional lesson with 15, 20 students, you know, is in some way personalized when they don't have any sustained practice is just bonkers to me it's absolutely marketing. yeah it's marketing it's all these these words that people use that i'm sure they're very well meaning and 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 they believe in them but but you know i've always come at it from a, a view of what well, does it work you know <laughs> and, and 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 you don't see it working it's it's quite amazing like years ago i when i was talking to to OUP. I remember saying I wrote in an email, I, I, and I wrote because, like, when I was doing my research on why why are these people, why are these students learning to speak so quickly when in my previous school they weren't, um, I kind of found a book, an amazing book by a guy called Peter Skeen. I don't know if you've heard of him. And um, Peter Skeen wrote uh, a cognitive a cognitive approach to language learning, and uh, it's published by Oxford University Press. I don't know if it's still in print, but Skeen connected all of that you know the the actual the the, the mechanics of of human memory to language learning elt and stuff like that and and and, and that there was a there was a big kind of i had a long email discussion with um with uh stephen uh, with, with stephen crashen do you know you know stephen crashen yeah. and and we had a great discussion because he listened to one of my um sort of case studies with Jane, Chinese Jane, and, and went, wow, that's amazing. You know, what did you do? I want to know what you did. So I, we had this long discussion. And Krashen's all about comprehensible input and listening, reading and listening, but not studying any form, i.e. grammar. And Skian thought that you needed to study a little bit of form to scaffold to get into a conversation. So he was kind of talking about what we did. 
And and there is this thing, you know, it's like it's it's interesting in in language teaching and language acquisition and stuff. It's like people go down avenues of specialization or they have their theory and they stick to it forever. They're not flexible. They don't see that it's it's not one or the other. It's a combination of everything. And and that that's that's what happens. So so, you know, like you like. What what really upsets me is is when I've talked to so many students who have studied English for years, and you know one 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 girl I work with, a woman in Colombia, Lily uh, Lily. She, I said to her, can you can you just tell me how many courses you've done, and where, and what it cost, right? <laughs> and um, and she she reeled off about twelve schools and courses in Colombia finishing up at the British Council in, in Bogota which was ridiculously expensive and you know I said well what did you say when you, you did you finish that one no did you finish that course no 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 and what what did they say to you when you paid all this money and you hadn't been able to start speaking very well and and this happens all over the world because I've spoken to lots of people. Is that they they get told they need to work a bit harder and do a bit more grammar. And that basically, to me, is is the system blaming students for their 100%. failure. Yes, that's what school does, actually. Which is just shocking. It's shocking. I. Can- I want to tie this back to misnomers again. One of them is accent reduction and people's whole Mm -hmm. job is accent reduction. We're going to reduce your accent and then you'll be able to speak English. And you go, well, accents don't actually matter. And I don't know if anybody's- No, they don't matter. They don't don't (laughs) matter. No, they're great. I love them. It's an incredible industry. So because English isn't sound based, we don't care about the sound. So Jason, you have- quite a few more sounds than I do as as British people and you too, Caroline, you have British English has more sounds and you got, you can't go 10 feet in England without the accent changing Yeah, yeah. because people um, identify it's part of their heritage and part of who they are. But in North America, belonging was, was our value and we shed all of our accents. So a lot of the people, 55% of all, people, English speakers in the world have the same accent and they're, Mm. it's from Hollywood, it's from North America. So the accent reduction, it's intelligibility is the goal. And you you get that Caroline? An English teacher who knows the difference between accent reduction and your accent's adorable and part of where you came from and your intelligibility needs work or it doesn't. Yeah. But it has nothing to do with your accent. No, nothing. 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 But I bet but I bet Caroline gets that because you have people who want to improve their English for work, don't you? Yeah, and some of they... them definitely complain about their accents and they want to get rid of their strong Italian accent. But this woman yesterday, I asked her exactly that because it's uh, one of the points I took her through the book, Through English is Crazy, briefly just to show her the various points. And one of them was exactly that about accents. And I said it. So you have a, an Italian accent. What do you think about that? Is it a problem for you? She said, no. And I said, that's wonderful. And then I told her, listen, I have a really strong English Roman accent when I speak Italian. And um, and I've just, after reading this, I've come to terms with it. It's, it's like uh, stopping smoking. <laughs> <laughs> You just, uh, you learn something, you, you, it becomes, you know, something that you accept. And, uh, and now I'm so much more relaxed in, in like I, okay, I still get angry when I make mistakes in Italian because I do, because Italian has male and female and, and English doesn't for everything. And uh, people learning English with their accents, I just, it's very easy to explain once you, but you have to accept it yourself. So now that I've accepted mm. it myself, I can give it to everybody uh-huh. easily. Yeah. And it's a pleasure. It's it's wonderful. I did actually want to say something about words. And uh, I also mentioned the word scaffolding. I sounded a bit technical and I thought I'd, I'd give it a go with her. Um, 
So, it, you know, it's a bit like, um, well, anyway, a skeleton of flesh and blood and stuff like that. But um, I said, you know, there is this uh, comment somewhere in Judy's book that you have to have heard, I, I don't remember if it was 300 hours of, of English or 800 hours of English. I thought, well, what was the number, Judy? Was it 300? You don't yeah, remember? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that was not the number that I thought you were going to say. I thought you were uh, say well, no, well, it was either three hundred. I think it's three hundred, not eight hundred. It was a lot. I mean, it, maybe it wasn't even a lot because it, what, it's all relative. So, but in order, because we we are talking about patterns, we're talking about structure and scaffold, see scaffolding, scaffolding, and mm -hmm. and all these different things. But we're not talking about the words that you use to express anything. And you have obviously in your book, you've got a few words and Jason's got words related to each topic that we deal with when we do that particular lesson or session or whatever. So I was just thinking, you know, you, you need to acquire a lot of words to be able to, to exploit these patterns, basically, because if you don't have any words, then what are you going to say? We're doing all this in English. We speak English. But uh, the people listening, you know, they are probably English or their English is pretty good. But people learning English, they don't have a lot of words. And so they need to listen. And so obviously I was telling them, like you say, like I know, like everybody who's kind of half interested knows, have English around you everywhere all the time. And it'll come in and you'll remember it when you need oh. it. But, you know, that's yeah. because I've learned other languages myself. I, I, I know. Anyway. Well, I see it as, uh, as you know, like the, our summer school, we had 10 lessons, two weeks, three hours a day. And I start them on uh, A2. Even uh, We don't even do a, 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 we don't even grade them. We just get everyone that's doing the same thing. We have a few options at the end in terms of level, but it's it's to get them to really reinforce the basic patterns that to automatize them get them really really auto automated so they don't have to think this is why i have a, i have a bit of a thing about you know I, I like finding out whether they're they're still translating or they're thinking in english and i love it when they're still translating because then in in 10 lessons they're thinking in english mm -hmm. and and that's the transition so it's it's the building blocks of the basic patterns that enable communication and then once once they and this is why i say to people you know if they if they start low start low go really low mm -hmm. you know way below your what you think your current level is but you, it'll it'll just help you find your feet mm. and then as you go up you can go up the levels quicker which means incorporating more complex and more unusual vocabulary so once you've got the building blocks then it's easier to pick up new words and add i see vocab as ammunition you know there oh, is sure and and already in, yeah and 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 where well, no well, it, like you have all this these these words that you can use to describe or express things, and you you add to them as you become more adept at speaking, and yeah. more comfortable. And once your anxiety level goes down and stuff like that, and then you use those words in a real conversation where you you emerge successful and your esteem has risen. And you that boosts your confidence, and the more relaxed and more confident you get, the more and the more engaging the conversation is, and the more rewarding it is as a human experience, the more they will stick, the easier they will stick because you're building cognitive markers around yeah. them. And that's yeah. how you acquire vocab. And so so you you adding a little bit each time, new words and using them aids recall. That, that's how I see it, you know. It's. Um, I was going to say the Voice of America used like fifteen hundred words and, and delivered the the news of the world in yeah. really simple, very, yeah. very, very simple yeah. vocabulary, right? Yeah. It wasn't about more and more words. No, it was about a workable number of words. Exactly. Yeah, and like, like a lot of tabloid newspapers, you know, like like the Sun or the Mirror in the UK, you know, they, they, 
I, I remember talking. To, my, my brother's a, a, a was a journalist. I know lots of journalists, and and I remember talking to some friends, and and people's perception often is that that tabloid journalists are are not as clever as broadsheet journalists because they don't use big words. But I tell you, the, everyone in journalism says they're the best writers because they use fewer words in a better way <laughs> to get their message across. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I get that. So it's 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 looking at some of the expressions that you use. I think Caroline, what you probably get is like, and I can see where these guys are coming. You know, you get people who want they get out. They everyone has their little sort of language learning anxious spot, you know. Mm -hmm. And and some for some of them, it's if they're reasonably high level speakers, it's their accent. And then for other people, it's like, well, I can speak, but I don't know this word, you know, or I don't know lots of vocab. And and so people have their, their little anxious bits. But I think one of the things I do anyway, I try and do, is just lower the anxiety level. It's okay. It's okay not to know. If someone uses a word you don't know, say, what's that word? You know? 100%. Just ask a question. Mm, yeah. And that's why questions are crucial at the early stages. Being able to ask valid, understandable questions, because then you get valid, understandable answers, and that aids communication. So everything at the at the lowest levels is always it starts with the building blocks are questions, and then you, you and and scaffolding, which we talked about, is that you you ask a question, and it's like a like a like a lawyer would say to you, you know, never ask a question to which you don't know the answer, right? And 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 so at the lowest level, you ask a question, but you've got you've got you've worked on it before, so you know roughly what you're going to get back, and that scaffolding, says it gets you up there and keeps you there for a time, where you're in the zone and you're comprehending. And that's that's how it, that's 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 the magic bit, you know. In the zone for sure. <laughs> so is that is that answer? Patterns. I mean, I, I've got. I, I, there's some. I found some interest. There's some good stuff on, and it, it, it is. It's all about cognition, and you know, um, it's. Uh, da, 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 da. So it, it's basically our ability to pick up these things is innate. You know, which is what Chomsky said, which is what Pinker says, um, and this is the the iniquity is that all of this work you know, over the years and research and, and, and has, has been done by scientists and psycholinguists and, and, and people like that. And it all exists and it has existed for decades in, in the literature, you know, scientific or research literature. But this, this has rarely, if ever, been applied to... English language teaching as we know it. And that's, I think, is possibly, you know, I mean, I see it as, a, as one of the crimes of the, of, of the modern world, you know, in terms of the number of hours and the amount of money and the amount of hope that people have invested. Yeah. Billions of people every year try to learn English. One and a half billion at any one time are trying to learn English. And... Yeah. They don't have the right information, but it exists and it's held by the gatekeepers. Yeah. Now now we have the internet, so gatekeepers are finished. I think things are improving because people are using the information online and they're picking up information that way. I've noticed they're in the last couple of years. for themselves. Exactly. Yeah, I've think. noticed in the last couple of years, the French kids who come to us in the summer, their speaking level is higher than it used to be. And I put that down to them teaching themselves and doing some practice online and using apps, yeah. you know, for more and more listening and stuff like that, crash and kind yeah. of thing. Lots of listening, more reading. Yeah. Um, and they read out of interest, you know, and stuff like that online rather than being forced to read a book that they don't want to read, you know. So, so that's improving, I think, definitely. Yeah. But how do we, how do we, you know, I don't know. I've spent, what is it, 23 years now trying to figure out how to, <laughs> how to, how to, how to tell more time. people. <laughs> You're ahead of your time, for sure. 
we all got to fall in behind like the, the guys that go first even me if you go first you get a lot of mud on you and it's a oh, messy yeah. messy job to yeah. go first so or there's a cute video probably on youtube of a leader and he's dancing in the middle of the field and he's just an idiot dancing in the middle yeah, of the field so someone that. dances with him and then everybody joins him and they're all dancing in the field it's like a two minute clip about you know until someone follows you you're not a leader. yeah you're yeah an idiot. yeah it's so it's a great video isn't it yeah i i, I think there was was it derek something or other wasn't it who who, who put that up on because he did a ted talk and he incorporated that into his TED talk. And he yeah. used to run, um, I mean, it was like a CD mail order firm in the States, I think. And he's he's quite a sort of business leaderish guy, you know, he's got quite innovative thinker. But that video was 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 brilliant because it just it visually shows you what happens and how something gets going, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, I think I it's why I jumped behind you and I didn't even I knew you were right. And we didn't have any kind of conversation like this, but I thought, you know, if I get behind him, then he's a leader, not an idiot. I can do that for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's not crazy, believe me. I'm oh, crazy. well, I, I tell you what, you, know, you feel a bit crazy because, like, over the I years, was, I felt been... angry. So, but you know, there goes my Irish is showing right there. It just made me so mad. <laughs> I didn't feel crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I just find it kind of baffling and kind of a bit disappointing. You know, disappointing. Uh, Very disappointed in capitalism yeah. that they would exploit the population to this degree when they have the power and the responsibility to help people, and they yeah. do that. They take money instead. Go, but that's that the thing, isn't it? It's like it's the complete antithesis of what. They profess yeah. they profess to yeah. be providing. Which Here's is... the the number one misnomer: it's education. It's yeah. very very loosely <laughs> used. That's indoctrination and nothing else. 